Hi folks, Rodney back again with Rodney's Northwest Ride and Reviews. I've had quite a few people comment on the 12.3 inch instrument cluster uh, video that I did. And so one of the comments was made that, hey, I see that you're making the changes on the screen, but I can't see what buttons you're actually pushing. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna kind of maybe slow it down a little bit and try to help explain better and show you the buttons I'm actually pushing in order to make the changes on the screen. So uh, first off, this is a 2024 Tacoma TRD Off-Road. This is a base model version uh, with the, even though it's a base model version, it does have the heated seats and it does have the 14 inch screen that's been added. Uh, but anyway, your instrument cluster is gonna be the same regardless of whether it's a TRD off-road, just a base model, an upgrade package, or even a premium package. And so I'm gonna kind of walk down through it here. Um, to begin with, you got your arrows up and down, left and right, and then of course you have the OK button there in the center. That is going to operate your MIDI screen uh, in the center, uh, but then you can also use it to help customize both the left and the right side of the screen there. And so I'm going to show you how to do that. So the first thing that we're going to do is using the OK button, um, we're going to go down. So now it opens up the profile, and there is three different profiles. So for instance, you have one two, and then three. So the benefit of having the three different profiles is it enables you to go on ahead and customize your screen for different driving situations. So for instance, uh, in this one, we have, we have the uh, turbo boost that you see on the left. On the right, it says fuel economy. Now, somebody's gonna make a comment about the fuel economy 6.1. Uh, the vehicle has seven miles on it, and most of that time it's just been sitting idling. So. Uh, before you go blasting me, that's what that's from. But, like I said, you can customize both sides of the screen. So in order to do that, um, we're gonna make sure we're in the number one profile. And it doesn't matter what profile you use. You push and hold the OK button, and it opens up the internal menu. So once you're in there, then you can find the settings menu. There again, we're gonna use the OK button, push and hold it until it opens up the settings menu. All right, so now we are in that settings menu and you can see at the top, you got LDA, which is part of your lane departure. Um, when we use the OK button and open up, it opens up into an internal menu for that one as well. So I'm gonna push and hold it until it opens up that internal menu. So now that it's on, you can either turn lane departure on or off. If you scroll down, you can go into alert options. So your alert options is either an audible alert or a vibrating mode on the steering wheel. So currently it's set in the vibrating mode. If you wanted to change it, you just push the OK button again real quick, and of course that changes it to the audible mark. Your alert timing below that is just a sensitivity level. So you have a low and a high. Um, a lot of people are, are concerned that, hey, is it gonna you know force me to you know, is it gonna jerk the steering wheel out of my hands? No, the answer is no, it won't. It does kind of nudge you back in the right direction, but you are able to override the system at any time. If you get back out of that screen, you just hit your circle back button. And then once we're below that, we can go into the BSM, which is your blind spot monitoring. So if we hit the OK button real quick, that turns that feature off. Okay, so now if you watch the mirror over there, when I go back in and turn that feature back on, it lights up in a bright amber just to kind of let you know that somebody's in your blind spot. Uh, once they're gone, once they're not in your blind spot anymore, that light will go out. Now, if you put your turn signals on while somebody's in your blind spot, it would start flashing at you to let you know that somebody's there before you actually make that turn. The next one down is your PCS, and that stands for pre-collision system. So your pre-collision system uses a millimeter wave radar sensor um, just below the emblem on the front, front grille. Uh, it also uses your camera up here. And so what that does, if, if you're driving through town and let's say somebody stops in front of you and you don't know them in time, it does have the ability to take over and stop the vehicle so that you don't rear end them. What's gonna happen in that situation is it will start flashing on the dash. It's gonna tell you to brake. Uh, but if you don't do something pretty soon, then like I said, it will take over when that feature is turned on. The way you turn it on, you push and hold the OK button when that PCS is highlighted. So you push and hold it. It opens up an internal menu again. And of course, you can set the warning timing, which there again is sensitivity level, uh, or you can turn that feature off. Now to get back out of that screen, you're just going to hit your circle back button. 
PDA is your proactive driving assist. So I'm gonna turn that feature on. So there again, you just push the okay button, turn it on. And if I hit the circle back button so you can see it, I'm not seeing it light up here. Let's go back and double check it. We're gonna open up that internal menu. Okay, so it shows that it is turned on right now. I'm sure as soon as we start driving, it will light up. It's uh, an amber color, so let's double check. Get out of that screen. Yeah, I'm not seeing it show up right now. So I'll have to double check that and get back to you on it. Uh, but what, what it does in my Tacoma is over on the right hand side of the screen, it lights up. It's like a, a red, kind of an amber color. And it shows a vehicle kind of with like a halo kind of around it. And so basically what the PDA does, uh, if you're driving through town, uh, let's say you're pulling up to a, an intersection and say there's a bicyclist on the right hand side, it will kind of kind of push your vehicle over to the left hand side of the lane to try to give that bicyclist more room. If there's a pedestrian standing on a street corner like they're waiting to make a, a cross, um, it also will kind of start slowing the vehicle down um, just to make sure that you know you're going to you're not going to hit that pedestrian. So it is a proactive approach to driving. Um, and it just if you're not used to it, it can kind of catch you off guard. But there again, you can turn that feature off. All right, so we're going to go back into the settings menu again. Push and hold it. There it opens up your menu again. All right, RCTA stands for Rear Cross Traffic Alert. So it works kind of in conjunction with your blind spot monitoring, even though it's two separate functions. So your rear cross traffic alert, when you're backing up at a, say a grocery store or a parking lot of some sort, uh, it picks up that side traffic that a lot of times you can't see. So you can hit the OK button real quick to turn that feature off. And of course it tells you that it's been turned off on the screen. Uh, we're gonna circle back out of that. Now we're gonna turn that feature back on. Just a real quick hit the OK button and then you're back on. All right. Next one is RSA, which stands for Road Sign Assistance. So this camera can read speed limit signs, it reads caution signs, it reads stop signs. Uh, if there is a pedestrian, like a crosswalk, uh, it will read that as well. All right, below that, um, and there again, you can hit the OK button real quick to turn that feature off. You can also op open up an internal menu. Uh, under vehicle settings, you can change from English to metric. Uh, if you had multiple drivers, you could set up uh, certain functions in there that, that one driver may like versus another. In the meter settings, so we're going to open up that internal menu by pushing the OK button. Okay, you can go in there and change the language, you can change units, uh, meter type. So if you push the OK button and hold it, it brings up meter type. And so you can change that and then we'll customize here in just a moment. So if I hit the, the OK button again, see how it changed the screen? Now let's drop down one. We're gonna, I'm gonna hit the OK button again and do the same thing. See how it goes to a single instrument gauge there in the center. And then if we go back to the dual, I'm gonna hit the OK button again and it goes back to dual. Now you can take it a step forward and so we're gonna circle back out of that screen. We're gonna go back to meter style. I'm gonna push the OK button and hold it. Now I can change the out or the layout. So go to casual. I'm gonna hit the OK button and go to smart. This is what tough looks like. and then sporty. All right, so those are different meter styles. A lot of people prefer the tough look, so I'm gonna go back to that and just leave it there. All right, I'm gonna hit the circle back button and get back out of that screen. All right, now let's talk about customizing both the left and the right hand side. So give me just a moment here. All right, so we talked about the three different profiles. 
So the way you customize those, you're going to push the OK button. Once you get to the profile you want, you push the OK button and hold it, and then it opens up that profile. Now, if I use the arrow left, I'm ready to customize the left-hand side. So in that, I can adjust. Oh, sorry, it backed itself back out of there. So I'm going to push the OK button and hold it again. Okay. Now, you got Turbo Boost. If you wanted just a blank screen, you could do that. You can do Eco Indicator. Your navigation, you can set up in there. Audio settings, so you can see the station that it's on. Traction Monitor, which most people probably won't care too much about. Um, and then auxiliary gauges would be your, you know, voltage and then also uh, oil temperature. All right, so let's say we want to customize. I'm going to go back. I'm going to hit the OK button again, open up that first profile. If I want to customize the right-hand side, I've got fuel economy, driving support, and that pertains to your adaptive cruise, your lane departure, things of that nature. You can set up navigation over there. Uh, you can do the audio stations over there. Basically, you can set up the same information, just determines on which side you want to put it on. Tire pressure. Got your pitch and roll if you're using your off-road version. Now, if you have just an SR5 or a TRD Sport, you won't have the pitch and roll in that. And if you wait too long on any certain area, it's going to back itself out of that profile. So I'm going to have to open it back up again. You got trailer mode, so you can actually set up for multiple trailers. Now, if you have the TRD off-road upgrade or the TRD Sport upgrade package and above, um, you will have a built-in integrated brake controller. Well, this one does not have it because it's just the basic TRD off-road. So anyway, you can customize both sides. And say, for instance, if you were going to be towing a trailer, you could set up for your, your trailer where you can see your trailer brakes. Uh, you could set up you know, temperature. You know, on the left-hand side, you could set up fuel economy if you wanted to. Uh, but then if you're in you know, other times where you're not towing a trailer, you may want to see the navigation on one side, and maybe you want to see fuel economy on the other, or you want to see turbo boost. You can set it up for any way that you want, but you can customize up to three different profiles. All right. So buttons on the steering wheel. Your, your uh, plus and minus sign is for your stereo volume. Uh, your voice command. Uh, you can hang up or answer on a phone call. This is for your lane departure is right here, and then adaptive cruise control. Now, uh, you have to be in drive before you're going to be able to set the cruise. You have the ability to hit this button here, and it does two functions. Number one, it will set the cruise, but then it also sets your lane departure. So, for instance, you look that adaptive cruise is ready. Now, if you look up at the top, right above where you see the cruise on, you've got four gray lines. And hopefully you guys can see those from here, but that gives you the ability to adjust your tracking distance between you and the car in front of you. So if they slow down slower than the cruising speed, you're gonna keep that same safe distance and slow down with them when that feature is turned on. Uh, but this gives you the ability to go on ahead and change the distance. So for instance, if you're in, well, I'm gonna use Portland as an example because that's one of the biggest metropolitan areas to us. Um, if you're in the Portland area, you don't want to give somebody 10 car links to be pulling in front of you all the time when you're out on the freeway, uh, as it may, you know, traffic may kind of slow down and bunch up a little bit, but you don't want to give them that much distance in between. And so that gives you the ability to set that. You may want to go ahead and reduce that distance, you know, down to the one setting where it, that's going to be somewhere between three and five car links. So um, that's kind of much how you, how you uh, adjust the, the dash there. Um, like I mentioned, you got lane departure, you got your cruise control. This is so you can set your cruise control, but then you can also change the speed either plus or uh, minus one mile per hour at a time. The mode button pertains to the stereo system. So if you hit it once, it's going to go to AM, then it will go to FM, then it will go to Sirius Satellite Radio, and then it will go to Bluetooth. Uh, that way, if you had any music on your phone, you could stream it you know, through the stereo system. Uh, let's talk about the stereo for a moment. So, once again, this is a 14-inch screen. I had this 14-inch screen in my 2022 Tundra. 
Um, I actually really, really enjoyed it. I think in the Tacoma, it might be a little too big. Uh, I think that maybe the, the best size would probably been like a 12 or a 12.3 inch uh, because I've seen those in the Highlander and those look excellent. However, here, um, it just seems like it's like on a, and somebody's going to blast me for this, but almost like a geriatric version where, you know, all of the font is so large that it's, it's almost too close to use. So uh, that's just my thoughts on it. My TRD off-road does have an 8-inch screen, and it was definitely an adjustment to go from the 14-inch screen that I had in the Tundra down to the 8-inch screen in my TRD off-road upgrade packets. Unfortunately, they didn't offer the 14-inch screen, at least not in my area, uh, at this time. So, uh, to go into settings, and the infotainment system is going to be exactly the same regardless of whether it has the 8-inch screen or the 14-inch screen. So, I want to kind of run through some of these features for you. You can go in there and you can set personal info if you wanted to. Uh, once you pair up your, your phone, and this is going to pertain to the remote connect that you download on your on your phone uh, your salesperson should set that up for you and so instead of it saying guest obviously it would have your name up here uh, as you as the personal driver or the primary driver rather uh, and like I said that would all be set up for you uh, Bluetooth and devices you can go in there and you can add additional phones um, keep in mind only one phone can actually be connected at a time um, normally, you know, when you set up your phone with the primary driver, normally that would be the phone that's in there. However, uh, let's say you got a, a couple and you got the primary driver and then you have a second person uh, adds their phone as well. Well, because you can only have one phone actually connected at a time, but you can have multiple phones paired. Uh, if you get out of the vehicle, you'll have the ability to, let's say, for instance, one of the, the people decide to go to the grocery store and the primary driver is not in it at that time, they can go in and as soon as they get in the vehicle, as long as their Bluetooth is on on their phone, it will automatically pair up to the vehicle. And that can also be for the Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. Let's get back out of this screen. Notifications are going to be for number one, you have text messages. So if a text message comes in, that would be a notification for that. But it can also be a notification letting you know that there is an update available for your vehicle. Uh, and that comes in through satellite. I haven't had any updates on my new Tacoma yet, uh, but I've had probably five different updates on my 2022 Tundra that I had. Wi-Fi, if you set up the Wi-Fi hotspot, you would be able to utilize the Wi-Fi in the vehicle. Um, display, I've had people ask this all the time. Hey, do you have a way to change the brightness on the screen? And the answer is yes. It's all touch screen, so you can either dim it or you can brighten it. Or you can set it up on automatic, which is what it's on right there. And so the automatic uses a sensor that's up on the, up on the dash there. Uh, and so as, as it gets darker or there's cloud cover, it may a little bit, be a little bit darker, it can brighten the screen if it needs to. Uh, also at nighttime, it will dim the screen to kind of put it in a, like a nighttime mode. And then you can change the contrast. So that's not only for the stereo screen, uh, but also for the backup camera too. If you want to, to set a radio station, hopefully the volume's not gonna come on too loud. We're going to enable the audio. Yep. So it will automatically come with Sirius Satellite Radio. It's going to be free for 90 days. It will give you the option to go ahead and sign up for it and keep it. One thing to keep in mind is that, and I've had this with all the vehicles, uh, if, you, if you want to sign up for it, it's probably going to start somewhere in the mid-20s. Uh, if you tell them no a few times, they will slash the price. And keep in mind, Sirius Satellite Radio has absolutely nothing to do with Toyota. Uh, but <clears throat> like I said, they will cut the price on it. Um, and it ends up being somewhere around $10 a month. So hopefully that helps you a little bit. But let's say we want to go ahead and set a station. So you can do it manually so by hit Tune. You go to FM. Um, once you start putting in the numbers, I'm going to back up for a moment. You could go on ahead and tune that station. And then if you wanted to preset it, you click the heart. And that's how you preset stations. Now, if you want to unselect them, you just hit the heart again, and it takes them back out. 
You could put it in a scan mode, which will pick up the strongest stations in your area. So if you do go to a new area, that's how you would do it. You can actually preset up to 30 different stations and it doesn't matter uh, whether it's on AM, FM, or satellite radio, you can pre-select them in any order that you want to. Um, and I think that kind of takes care of that. So in the source menu, and that's where we're at right now, uh, you got AM, FM, Sirius Satellite Radio. Um, if you're listening to Sirius Satellite, it breaks down the different genres for you. And so, for instance, if you wanted to listen to music and you wanted to listen to rock music, um, it will pull up some of the most listened to songs, uh, but then again, you can go in there and you can actually preset stations that you want. Uh, your new vehicle will come with a Sirius Satellite brochure, will be in your owner's manual, uh, so you'll have a brochure telling you what all the different stations do. Um, as far as vehicle goes, under trip information, you can set up where you have instant fuel economy there, um, after you start driving, every minute it's going to select the, the fuel economy. And this could be sitting still too, so that's probably what you're seeing right now. Uh, if you've got great gas mileage and you wanted to post that, you could go under history, you could hit update, and that would post your best mileage there. Uh, but if you wanted to clear that, you can hit clear data, and that will clear it out and then you go ahead and just kind of start that process again. Up here at the top, you've got time. It's telling you that your Bluetooth uh, is connected. And actually, it's, it's grayed out right now. So once you connect it, I believe it actually turned blue. And then same thing with your satellite signal. Um, down here, like I mentioned, you have heated seats. We have three different settings on the heated seats. Um, you've got the large tactile buttons. Those are going to be the same in any of them. The one difference is that on a base TRD off-road and the TRD off-road, and this pertains to the TRD Sport as well, um, unless you get the premium package in those in those packet those vehicles, uh, you're not going to have the dual climate control. So that part's different. So uh, I know we kind of covered a lot. I want to go over just a couple more buttons here. Just being the base model, uh, you do have a button here to brighten or dim the panel lights, and that's for your screen right up here. Uh, you have the ability to go in ahead and raise or lower your headlights, uh, and those are great. I put larger tires on mine, and so the front end sets up a little bit higher than what the normal was, and so I was able to kind of aim my headlights back down so that I'm not blinding people. Um, this is for your auto dimming headlamps, traction control, your dome light that's on the back of the cab, and then a lot of them have the LED data or uh, bed lights, and so if it has that, those are going to be tied with that. Uh, rear dome light on the back of the cab so that's your your button to turn them on or off so kind of covered a lot there uh, but i wanted to kind of take my time and just kind of walk through it and hopefully this helps you know some some people understand better you know how to operate the buttons that are on the steering wheel uh, i know a lot of times salespeople are trying to rush through it because there's so much information to cover now um, but uh, hopefully this breaks it down a little bit better for you so thanks again for watching hope you have a great day